Backdoor dominance. Backdoor two fives. What are they? How do they work? Where can we use them? So in the most simple terms, a backdoor dominant is a dominant chord on the flat seven degree of the scale. Or another way to think about it is a tone down, a whole step down from the tonic. That's the long and short of it, really. So in the key of C, our flat seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, flat seven, B flat, a dominant seven chord on the flat seven. So a B flat seven chord that resolves to the C. Now often when we use non-diatonic dominant chords in our progressions like these and secondary dominants and tritone substitutions, it's pretty common to precede that dominant chord, thinking of that dominant chord as a five chord, with its two chord. So let me give an example. If we're using a secondary dominant chord, for example, so we want to move from our one chord to our two chord, and we're going to use a secondary dominant of the two chord, so the five of two, to lead us to that two chord. Now what we could do is thinking of that five chord, that A7 as a five chord, we play the two before as well, so we would create a two, five, and then thinking of that D minor as the one. We could do the same with tritone substitutions. So rather than in a tritone substitution, just putting in the, the substitution there. We can put in the two of that five chord as well. And it's really common to see the same thing done with our backdoor dominant. So we create a backdoor 2-5 that leads us to resolve to our tonic chord. Now theoretically that 2-5 is a 2-5 in E flat major. But we're not resolving to an E flat here, we're resolving to a C major. So in the context of C, that backdoor 2-5 is actually a minor 4 followed by a dominant flat 7 the resolves to the one chord. So we call it a 2-5 because of its relationship to each other, but also because of how it functions in leading us to a one chord. So that's what a backdoor progression is, or backdoor 2-5 is. So now you could work it out in any key. So in E flat, we're gonna build on the fourth degree, we're gonna have a minor seven chord, so A flat, minor seven. And on the flat seven, flat seven, is a dominant chord, D flat seven. So we could have a progression like. Nice. Now let's explore a little of what's going on and why it works. If we start off by looking at the backdoor dominant in comparison to the primary dominant. So if we stay in the key of C, G seven is our primary dominant. And that movement of the five chord to the one chord, the G to the C, is called a perfect cadence in traditional theory, and it has the strongest pull to resolve to the one chord. Now, if we have a little look at why we get that pull, we'll discover some reasons for why the backdoor dominant also resolves nicely to the one chord. So I think that with that G7, the strength of the resolution comes from the third and the seventh of the chord. Now that third and seventh creates a tritone which creates this sort of dissonance and instability that feels like it wants to resolve. And in this case, each note wants to resolve a semitone up or down to become the C. So in this case, our third of the G resolves up a semitone to become the root note of the C. And our seventh of the G resolves down a semitone to become the third of the C. Now if we take a look at our B flat seven, our backdoor dominant, obviously this is a dominant seven chord just like the G seven and contains that tritone that creates that dissonance and instability and that kind of need to resolve. But here we're gonna take our seventh and our fifth that want to resolve down semitones to become the third and the fifth of our tonic. So rather than having resolving the third and seventh to become the root and third, we're taking our seventh and fifth and resolving to the third and fifth. 
So it's not quite as strong a resolution as but there's definitely a comfortable resolution. I think this is also a good time to talk about the close relationship between dominant seven chords and diminished seven chords. If you take any dominant seven chord and you raise the root note by a semitone, you get a diminished seven chord. I'll just let you think about that for a second. Now, because these chords share three notes, including the tritone that we have present in our dominant seven chord, it means that this diminished chord also nicely resolves to the same chord that our dominant seven chord does. So if we think about this in relation to our G7 and its pull to C, we take our G7 and we take our root note and move it up a semitone, create a diminished chord. Now that diminished chord also resolves nicely to the C chord. Because we've got that same movement that's present in that G that I talked about, the resolution. What should I do here? With the diminished chord, we've still got that that's going to move to there. And if we play that diminished chord over a G bass note, given a G context, what we've created is a G7 with a flat 9. And not only does that flat 9 create a bit more tension that wants to be resolved, it also creates a note that can also fall a semitone to res resolution. So not only do we have the F and the, the B that want to resolve a semitone to the root and third of C, we've now got an, this A flat that would also fall to become the fifth of the chord. So we've got this little shape here. And that's not all. With this shape, our G7 flat 9, if we're resolving to a major 9 chord, which is pretty common in a lot of environments, then not only do we have this nice resolution chromatically down to the 3rd and 7th of the C, that we have some voice leading going on here where we've got our B and D can stay and become the major 7 and major 9 of our C. Now let's get back to our backdoor dominant. So if we take our B flat 7 and we do the same thing, we raise our root note up a semitone. We've created that same diminished chord as the G7, so it should come as no surprise that a B flat 7 resolves to a C in the same way that a G does, especially if we play that B flat 7 as a B flat 7 with a flat 9. Because we know that those three notes, they're all going to drop a semitone to become a C major chord. I've done a separate video all about diminished chords. We're going to a lot more detail. So if you've not already seen that, check it out. Okay, while we're on this, an interesting little aside. Well, I think it's interesting anyway. And maybe someone out there could help me get my head around it. Now, in particularly in jazz, we have these really common ways to approach our tonic chords. So we've got our really standard 2-5-1. And then we also have our back door, 2-5, that we're talking about today. We also have a tritone sub. Okay, so three really common ways that we approach that. You see it in lots of standards. It's all over the place. Now, the reason that these are all connected and work so well is because the dominant chords of those, so our G7 and our B flat 7 and our D flat 7, all share that connection with the diminished chord that we talked about before. So if we take our G and we put that semitone up, we got that diminished shape, B flat, we've done the same, but it's the same for our D flat 7, put our root note up, a semitone, we've got that diminished shape again. But a diminished chord is a symmetrical chord, and it is in fact four chords in one. So this is not only an F diminished, it's an A flat diminished, and a B diminished, and a D diminished. So that diminished shape should include four different dominant chords, that all lead us to that same resolution. We've seen that we've got a G7 and a B flat 7 and a D flat 7. So what is the fourth chord? So if we take our diminished chord, let's lower the top note, we've got a D flat 7. If I lower the 
this note, I get my B flat seven. If I lower the G seven, if I lower this, I'm gonna get E seven. So an E seven or an E seven flat nine should resolve to a C. And it does. So if we were to put a two five, it works. But my question is, why do we never see this when it's really functioning in exactly the same way as a as a tritone sub or a backdoor two five? Why do we never come across? Now it doesn't sound as strong to me, but why is that? Okay, let's get back to what we were supposed to be talking about. Now, like lots of music theory ideas, there's often more than one way that we can find a reason as to why something works. Now with backdoor two five ones or backdoor progressions, another obvious explanation is that it's a simple use of modal interchange. Now modal interchange is where we borrow chords from a parallel key to use temporarily within our existing key. I've done a separate video all about modal interchange if you're not too familiar on the subject. So if we're in the key of C major, a parallel key to C major would be C natural minor on the chords that exist within C natural minor. Now if we're playing something within C, we could borrow chords from C natural minor. two chords that exist within C natural minor, F minor 7, B flat 7. So that's just another reason why this progression works so nicely. It's just modal interchange. But here's a bunch of ways that we can use our backdoor chords. But essentially, what they're all doing, and the purpose of a, of a backdoor 2-5, is to return us back to that tonic chord. So let's start by taking a 1-6-2-5-1, um, a um, and just replace our primary dominant with the backdoor dominant. Okay, nice. Now let's just add in, keep it as it is, but add in that two chord before it. Nice. Okay, now let's take away our original two chord, the D minor seven, and use our F minor seven, that minor four chord, as our two chord. Nice. We could even keep the two and the five chord and add in the backdoor two five after it. So we could have a... So it's not replacing our diatonic 2-5, we're just adding in the backdoor 2-5 after that dominant chord. So another idea would be to precede our backdoor 2-5 with a progression that actually leads us to that minor 4 chord. So in C, to lead us to that F minor 7, we could put the secondary dominant, the C7, in there. Or equally, we could use an E half diminished there. E half diminished is a very similar chord to a, a C7, but what it'll do is create a, a stepwise movement up to that that F for us in the in the bass. A backdoor two five is often used in conjunction with a four chord. It's a really common progression to have the, the four chord, or common cadence to have the four chord, and then the four minor that resolves to the one. It's called a minor plagal cadence. So typically, you know, you'd hear it. Four, four minor, one, minor plagal cadence. But this is um, often used to introduce a, a backdoor two five turnaround. So we would, um, maybe move to our four chord 
then to get back to our one chord, we can turn that four into a minor, add the turnaround. Maybe rather than approaching from beneath, we descend down from our tonic down to that minor four chord. So something like. Um, or equally like a minor line cliche. So there you go, if this idea was new to you, then hopefully you can start to recognize some of these movements in the pieces that you're playing. Um, but equally, if you're a composer, this is a great way to add some interesting movement to your pieces too. Also, before you go, I'm pleased to announce that I've also jumped on the Patreon bandwagon. So you can now support me over there in return for a few extra perks too. I really try and bring value in my videos and my content in a clear, nice, fun way. And the plan is just to do more of the same through Patreon. So there should be some links on my channel somewhere and on this page if you wanted to do that. And that's it. Thanks for being here.